Lynch here with Ride Equisafe. I wanted to take the opportunity to interview a good friend of mine who actually is wearing an air vest and also recently bought her daughter an air vest too, just to kind of go through what were some of the things that she was thinking when she was looking and doing her research, what some of her questions were, so on and so forth. So, Salisa, welcome. Hi. Can you tell everyone a little bit about yourself? <laughs> Hi, Salisa Houtman. I currently live in the Raleigh area, North Carolina. Um, I am an executive at a pharmaceutical company. I have been riding for a long time. Um, you could say that my family is full of riders, um, but currently my daughter also rides, and um, I was very excited um, when I thought about, you know, it might be time to get an air vest for both of us. So. Um, I was excited to find you and, and be able to have these discussions and figure out what's best for Sophie and me. So. Sounds great. So you mentioned that you were looking at Arabesque. Did it occur to you to think about body protectors at the time or did you know that you wanted to go into an Arabesque or what did you know or didn't you know? Well, I think I have always been obsessed with helmets and so <laughs> that was my focus for a while. Um, and I really knew nothing about body protectors. Um, Sophie has been showing, my daughter has been showing the hunters and, and the jumpers and myself and the hunters, so we just knew absolutely nothing about mm -hmm. body protectors. Um, we have both uh, opted for an air vest uh, for, for our situations. Um, so, yeah, so we, we didn't really know anything about either, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Yep. So what was the deciding factor that really pushed you into the air vest to start with? Well, um, as you know, <laughs> I am a very data-driven individual. Um, it's, it, it comes from my line of work, I think. Um, and there really wasn't any robust data out there that I could look at. Um, and when I say that, there are studies, um, but you're dealing with a human being on an animal. And so every human being rides differently, every animal behaves differently, um, and the combination of the two on any given day will be different. So trying to replicate that in a scientific way to generate robust data that'll tell you something is a challenge. Mm -hmm. So um, for us, Actually, Catherine, um, we were very well educated from you. Mm -hmm. um, and I think for me, the final deciding factor for myself um, was I looked at the type of rider I am, um, the history of um, mishaps and falls that I've had. Unfortunately, I've had some. Um, and for me, the air vest was the best option. Mm -hmm. um, I don't jump very high so I, I, I didn't even know what a rotational fall was mm -hmm. so for me I separate from the horse unfortunately mm -hmm. I get unseated um, or you know unfortunately <laughs> and um, that all my falls historically had I been wearing an air vest it, it would have deployed mm -hmm. I, and I, I've not had a horse fall on me or anything like that so um, this was a good option for me Gotcha. So, so you felt like you knew when an air vest was going to work and when it wasn't going to work, and based on that, you felt comfortable with the decision to go to an air vest, knowing that it's not 100% guarantee that you're yeah. protected against everything. Well, I, I sort of applied the science to it. <laughs> so, you know, your canister has um, certain PSI, um, and you're going to need some, um, some force to deploy it. I'm not a small, petite person, um, and I, I ride a large horse. He, he's 17 too, so um, for me, I would like something to deploy when I hit the ground. So if you look at the PSI for the vest, um, it, it was a good option for me. Mm -hmm. And that's, um, you know, that, that's, that's sort of how I arrived at that decision versus a body protector. Gotcha. And, and you mentioned Sophie, and that Sophie is also in an air vest. Mm -hmm. um, and so for our audience, Sophie is in the horse pilot air vest, and Salisa is in a hit air vest. Um, and fortunately or unfortunately, you have seen Sophie deploy her vest <laughs> yes. a couple of times. A few times, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so what, what was kind of running through your mind when that happened, and what was the result? And <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. When you're thinking about yourself, it's one thing, but when you're thinking about your child, who mm -hmm. is 17, she's, she's my child, but she's a young <laughs> lady, um, it, 
Sophie does the jumpers, mm -hmm. um, and she's she's you know been at the 120 level and moving up to the 130, and so these are big jumps. Mm -hmm. And um, again, uh, the type type of mishaps, if we want to call them, <laughs> that she has encountered, um, she comes off her horse. Her mm -hmm. horse will stop at a jump. She she may ride through it, or maybe she comes <laughs> off. Um, so for her, the air vest deployed. Um, with stops mm -hmm. and so um, that was um, really something that you know worked really well because she came off it, it deployed and she basically said mom I didn't even feel the fall so um, that you know that versus a body protector um, I know both would probably be best mm -hmm. um, but she is um, I think best suited for an air vest and the two times that she had a mishap, it was fine. She mm -hmm. was fine. So, okay. um, you know, I know that there's never a guarantee of that, but for us, this worked really this well. This worked. Yeah, and she, she likes it. She feels more comfortable in it. She feels safe. She also has a uh, horse pilot show coat. Mm -hmm. So the horse pilot show coat, she's um, very thin, so you can't <laughs> even tell she's wearing an air vest. Yes. So it's... it's uh, it's good, and for me, it's peace of mind as yes, a mom. So. absolutely. Yeah. And and so for you, because you got your air vest actually a little while after yes. Sophie got hers, so what was it that triggered for you that it was time for you to get one? <laughs> well, uh, facts and data. I mean, <laughs> I, I read up on it, and I just thought, you know, um, you know, things happen. Horses spook. Um, mishaps happen, mm -hmm. and... Um, I'm an older woman, I have a very demanding career, and I want to be able to have this hobby, mm -hmm. and um, I need to stack the deck in my favor, mm -hmm. so anything protective that I can do, I do, so, mm -hmm. you know, best helmet I can get, um, after my research, Air vest was the best option for me. I really like the one I have. Mm -hmm. It's actually navy blue, so it <laughs> won't be too noticeable in the show ring. Mm -hmm. And frankly, I don't care if it is mm -hmm. because I think, um, you know, this was a very wise decision for me. Mm -hmm. So but full disclosure, Salisa's horse's name is Mr. Perfect, so he's a very good boy. Um, well, <laughs> usually yeah, a very good boy. Time, so. <laughs> So, so it sounds like that Sophie is mostly wearing her air vest under show clothing, and you've gotten her an air vest compatible show coat yes. to go with it. Yes. Um, and it is a horse pilot Aerotech, so we know that it's been tested to allow for the full inflation of the air vest mm -hmm. so that the seams won't bust, so on and so forth. Um, and you've opted for one that you can wear on top of anything, mm -hmm. and that's going to be kind mm -hmm. of your route, even when you're showing, you're planning on wearing it on top of a dark show coat. My decision on what air vest was, it was not very scientific, because <laughs> honestly, they're all tested, um, and I, I'm guessing most, if not all, are certified mm -hmm. in some way. So for me, it was comfort, and, and you actually um, directed me to one that you thought would be comfortable for me. Um, I've had a few um, concussions, and uh, for anybody who's had a, a, a fall that led to a concussion, um, you know, your neck is very sore, mm -hmm. and so the, the vest that, that I opted to, to get um, has really a lot of neck protection. Mm -hmm. um, so that that is how I arrived at that decision. Not mm -hmm. very scientific. I wanted something comfortable, um, and this one is. I mean, I, I don't even know I'm wearing it when I'm riding. In the beginning, I was a little like, oh, where's that, where's that <laughs> strap? Where's the I, I, yeah, right. Yeah. But now it's like, and it made a little jingle noise, and mm -hmm. I thought, oh, is Mr. Perfect going to care? No, <laughs> Mr. Perfect doesn't care. <laughs> good, good. Yeah. Well, so that actually brings me to another question, because probably the biggest question that I get asked is if, my horse is going to spook when the air vest goes off. And you've mm. been there with Sophie mm -hmm. when it has gone off. Mm -hmm. What was her horse's reaction? Well, absolutely nothing. <laughs> and I, actually, I had this um, thought that it was going to sound like a shotgun. Mm -hmm. Bam, or pop, or something. Um, the first time that it went off, it, it really wasn't the horse's fault. She mm -hmm. was warming up at a show. Um, and her trainer uh, put a Liverpool out, and he did it. They were in a hurry because mm -hmm. she was she had to go, and um, and the horse kind of didn't 
see it, and it was just sort of there, and he just went, <laughs> and it was a very weird slow motion kind of thing where mm -hmm. he just kind of went, whoa, and she kind of came off, and slow motion. It was funny more than anything, <laughs> um, but you, I didn't even hear it mm -hmm. the first time. It, it According to Sophie, it was a kind of mm -hmm. noise. Mm -hmm. um, so the second time, it was at a horse show, and she was uh, another horse show, and she her horse stopped at a jump that was um, quite colorful, and he <laughs> probably went, eh, I'm not going over that. So um, that one, I heard it, and it was a kind mm -hmm. of noise. Mm -hmm. So for anyone who thinks it's a shotgun noise, it, it isn't, at least not the, the and, and I can't speak for mine because uh, knocked wood. I have not deployed mine. I've almost deployed mine for getting to unclip, but I'm getting, you know, I'm 53, so the memory's not so good, but everybody has the same thing of needing to get into a routine to unclip before you get off, yeah, so yeah. good. Well, being that you're kind of in, in two situations of riding yourself and also being the parent of a rider, is there anything else that you would want people to know about body protection in general, whether it's the process that you went through to arrive at an air vest, something that you learned about the body protector, anything else that you think it would be helpful for people to know? I mean, for me, because I'm so data-driven in my mm -hmm. thinking, um, and I do analyze and perhaps overanalyze things, <laughs> Um, I think it's important to make sure that you get a vest from someone like you that can really walk you through all of your options because um, not everybody has the same needs um, for, for what they're looking for. So I think, you know, don't, don't go into a store, pull one off the rack and put it on and, oh, it feels good and then walk out the store. I, you, you really, there's a lot you need to know about it. Mm -hmm. Um, even things about how long the cord should be, mm -hmm. um, you know, putting a new canister in, pros and cons of the different, you know, protector versus vest or both or one or different vests. And I mean, you know, th this, this is a sport that can be dangerous, I, I'm sorry to say, mm -hmm. but, um, y you know, this is a, um, this is something that you should take very seriously. Mm -hmm. Um, so we did, and um, and I thank you for that because I probably was a difficult client in terms of you know <laughs> being so data driven. Um, but I think that's what you need to do. You need to take the time. I mean, when people buy helmets, they try different helmets mm -hmm. on. Hopefully, they're in a, sh a a good store where people tell them you know if it's moving back and forth and. <laughs> You know that's uh, that's not good. Right. <laughs> so you know things like that. Yeah. You, your equipment needs to fit you, and you need to understand what you're buying. So um, this is very important. And my other thing would be, don't get a false sense of security with this. This is a dangerous sport, and you know things happen, mm -hmm. and nobody can predict what's going to happen because it's an animal. So you know you're you're not gonna always be protected every time because it's right. it's just truly gonna depend on what's happening. Mm -hmm. But knowing your vest and knowing, or or if you're in a, I can't speak to the body protector, but mm -hmm. whatever equipment you have, mm -hmm. knowing how it operates and making sure that it's fit properly mm -hmm. and that your tether is appropriately um, um, on the horse and you know this is important. And I think you also told me know where your canister is and. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, is it going to protect me if a horse falls on me? No, it's. I mean, that's twelve hundred pounds. Mm -hmm. So, um, but if I come off like I have, I hope it will soften the fall. So that's 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 why I bought one. Right. Right. Well, I think one of the things that you've demonstrated is that you have a very good understanding of the equipment that you have, also what it's capable of, as well as what it's not capable of. And recognizing that we are doing something that involves risk and is dangerous and we can bubble wrap ourselves but that's not gonna protect us 100% of the time so we want to make informed decisions about exactly. how to keep ourselves as safe as possible um, and that's exactly why we exist so yeah. I'm thrilled that we were able to help you and help Sophie um, and for anybody else that is looking to have any questions answered, we are happy to help. Whether you're buying something from us or from your local tax store, um, we really want to make sure that you get your questions answered, so don't ever hesitate to reach out. Thank you so much for joining me and having this conversation. I really appreciate it. I hope it will provide some information for others as to what questions to ask and things to think about when they are 
are looking for their own personal protective equipment when they're arriving. Thank you. It's a pleasure.